Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. We are doing a set of injectors on this 2005 Hilux. Uh, Euro 3, one of the earlier ones before the EJR cooler, as you can see. It's just got the pipe here and uh, plenty of clearance to the fuel lines. I think maybe similar fuel lines in another country they had an EJR cooler considering the way the pipes are bent and all that, but because um, they are different pipes to the Euro 4 ones. Anyway, I'm just going to leave this camera rolling the whole time, so this could be a good one. I'm going to make some other videos possibly with the other one while I'm at it, so if I start talking gibberish about something else or like I'm starting a new video, that's what's going on there. But if it works out, I'm just going to leave this one rolling, um, unless I get phone calls on the other one that I've got to deal with. Hopefully it's a bit of a quieter day, and um, hopefully no interruptions, but you know. Who knows? And look, depending what the phone call is and how long it goes for, I may just pause it and rejoin this video. So we'll get started. First thing we need to do is put some light on the subject. All right, so bada boom, bada bing. Four to drive, short extension and a 10 mil. I'm gonna get in here and undo this uh, on the intercooler the top clamp on the intercooler okay we need to loosen that off so you can't really necessarily see what I'm doing but I'm just gonna go through verbally what I'm doing and then you know you can always go back to this video and follow it step by step and I've chosen this vehicle because Although it's a very similar job on all of them, these ones are probably the easiest because, um, look, being a Hilux, the engine's a bit further forward, so everything's fairly easy to access. This one hasn't got a lift kit, um, hasn't got big tyres, so I can reach into most things without um, going to find some tools. I can reach in without having to climb up and down with everything wrong. It's actually really good. So, and we're going to try and we're going to use speed tools to we're going to strip it down, not quickly as we can, but fairly quickly without too much mucking around, so that we can try and keep the video short. So there's plenty of detail in other videos. No, it's not going to work. Look at that one at the back. Plenty of other videos that are going to go into more detail on the Hilux. We put a lot of the nuts and bolts up there. There it is, we've got the phone call straight away. Right. Good morning, this is Anthony. Yeah, you good yourself? Okay, sorry about that. So yeah, the phone call, we sorted that out. Um, where were we? What have I done? All I've done is taken out the four bolts for the intercooler. One, two, three, four. The clamp. Undone these two clamps around here. Okay, so we've got to take off the plugs. Always make sure you've pressed the button to release the plugs. Don't be pulling on wires. Make sure you've got the plug, right? And you know what? In that case, sometimes, I'm, no, that didn't break, but sometimes those plastic things, actually, no, it, it did it crack. Oh, no, did it or not? Oh, I don't know. Look. You just got to, it doesn't matter. Once they get old, it does happen. If it happens, look, I don't see this happening actually. I normally see them coming already broken, but it just made a click. I'm just going to put it on and off anyway. Yeah, no, it, it is going to lock in, right? But I think there was a, an extra bit of plastic there and there, which one was broken and the other one just broke. So slowly over time, things deteriorate. If that happens, then I'd suggest just putting a tiny little bit of RTV silicon. You know, smear the hell out. Just a little bit there and push it on. It's probably not going to come off anyway and let it dry before you start the car, right? So you've got to push the tags to make sure they're released, right? It's going to come back, but, right, just like that, right? So we obviously need to undo those plugs to get that off. And on this one also, the vacuum line. Uh, screw on my wall here. Where is it? So this is, we'll call it, this part of it's really just getting the intercooler off. Vacuum one off the bottom of the uh, map sensor. Just do it carefully. This is what I do, flat screwdriver, right? Bada boom, bada bing. 
Not that that really helped us, we need to get that out of there as well. So same deal, just gently, that tool works well. And the map filter on the early ones is different. See, it's white and they're a different configuration. We don't actually keep these in stock. So you just need to hit up Toyota Parts if you want to change a map filter on the earlier Euro 3. We really don't see many of these. It's good that we've got one though. It's going to make the job look really easy. And if I talk a bit less, I'll actually get it done and you'll go, wow, look how easy that was. So don't be misled by, this has probably never been off either, by the feel of it. Okay, so if your intercooler's not budging like this one, you may be able to use a screwdriver, but I've got a special tool you may have seen me use before. It's at the heater hose kind of tool. It's a snap-on tool actually. So if you see a snap-on truck around, hit him up. Um, they're not that good. It has broken before. I've broken the tip off it a few times. Not in the last 20 years though. Maybe I was a bit rough when I was apprentice or what. You know, a bit rough and hurried. The way the dealerships wanted you to work. Quick, quick, hurry up, we've got more to do. So that allowed that to slip out of that sock there. Once that's out a little bit, we just come over here and just try and give it a twist and see if that comes loose at this side and it has, so just a gentle pull and wiggle. Right, and off comes the intercooler. Go and dump that on the bench. So that call is just a gentleman looking at buying, I think, a 120 Prado. And he was wondering if we do vehicle inspections. So I'll explain it as soon as you're watching. I'll well give you as much information as I can. We do and we don't. I mean, look, what, what I do here is whatever I want because I'm busy, I pick and choose what I want to do and when I do it. Obviously, what was that? I don't know what that was. Interesting, a bit of wind, sounded nasty. Well, that was a bit of a pain. I had a little uh, yoga container full of little tap fitting, hose fitting things, and it's and it's fallen down. So not so exciting. Anyway, once you got this part off, usually you can give that a pull back and forth like that and it'll work its way loose as well, so we'll take that off. Just go and put it with the intercooler. Put everything back, I'll lay it out in a fashion and put it, everything back exactly the way it was. Older engine, a little bit more blow by. Always the oil looks worse at this area here. This is where the joint is, you know what I mean? So this one would be worse than the usual, but um, it's not too bad, it's just where they accumulate. Take note of where the clamp is and that the clamp's loose. Okay, so over time, when you service the vehicle, there is a couple of clamps around, a bit different on the 120s and the later Hiluxes, you know there's two clamps up here, different fuel lines like I said. You need to make sure they're tight and not moving, because what can happen, it can come to the end here, and the metal can rub and rub through the pipe. Luckily it's all good here on this one, but um, could have got worse. So, that's the intercooler off. Yeah, so with, with checking vehicles, generally I say, you can spend a lot of time checking a vehicle and not find something, so it's kind of, can't guarantee absolutely that you're not gonna find an issue. The main, you know, obviously you're looking for if it's been in a big bingle before and been patched up, you don't want that, but then luckily these days they've got the written off vehicle register, the WAVA, and um, if they've been on there, they need to be it needs to be registered. I don't know if there's dodgy ways around that as well. Probably is, whatever. But uh, so you really want to look. If the vehicle's fixed, that we can't, that we can't. Um, hang on, I've got to concentrate on this to get that out. That's it. That we can't find. Sorry, got to concentrate. So can't bloody can't multitask. I'm gonna get around that side. A bit easier. Right. Makes it much easier to undo plugs and clips and everything when it's clean. So, you know, we gave this one a really good wash down, but it was fairly dirty, not too bad. Just going to use that to get a bit of grip on it. So, we're going to take this whole wiring loom out of the way on the 
on the Prada, you can't do that without going all the way down, all the clips to the turbo and the alternator and everything. It's a bit of a pain. I'm just going to grab another rag. One other thing I should have mentioned and done is we'll cover up the turbo and make sure nothing's going to fall in there. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe, anything sitting just on the inside of that. And then turn it over. Use the clean saw just to cover it up. We don't want to drop anything down there that we don't know about, and in a colour that we can see. To I mean, it's pretty obvious to remove it. But if you put the intercooler back on without moving that out the way, I think you've got problems. Okay, these clips for the uh, injectors as well. Like always, something else you've got to be careful of. Um, just press to release the clip and pull it back by the plug. Right, pretty straightforward when you've done a few also, but. Um, not always. We see vehicles come in with um, people pulled on the wires and whatever, usually with problems, which is why they're here. With a Hilux, two 10mm bolts. And that wiring one there. As I said, with the Hilux and the 120, quite often put the bolts up there. Gonna get you in a bit closer. So we can see a little bit of what's going on. So, as I said, these are one of the easier ones to work on, but there is a couple of bits that are a little bit harder. Okay, but not really. But look, they all vary. This is the easiest one. The um, the next Hilux. The Euro 4 Hilux is probably the second easiest. And then the 120 Prado, this clip doesn't want to come off. Um, so am I just going to leave it? Mm. See if the bottom one comes off. Now you just got to remember these things, they haven't been off here, yeah, that one came off. They haven't been off for a while. It needs a bit more of a push because I can feel the clip still holding it. Gee, that's not good. Um, Plastics over time with the heat and everything, you know, it'll come off. You just got to take the time. You know, you're putting, you know, see the mark in my finger. I don't know if you can see that. You got to press darn hard sometimes. So, look, um, what we'll do now. I would really like to get that unplugged because it's going to get things out of the way. So, uh, got it. Just lost my finger open. No. So really, while I was pushing that tag in, I gave it a really, I was pushing and pulling, so you gotta sometimes push to let it, allow it to release, but um, I had to give it a really good push while I was pressing the tag. So now I've gotta release one of these uh, on the wiring loom, the plastic clips, just to get this wiring loom further out of the way. Just wanna get it right out of the way, because we can, it's only gonna take a few minutes. You know what, we'll get this one as well. There's this way there, you know what? We could take that clip out. I'm just gonna go and grab the 10 mil. Sometimes it's easier just to take a little bit more stuff out of the way. So, in this case, that 10 mil there. And what we'll do, just so we, just a good practice for you guys if you're not doing a lot of these. Get the bolt out, all right? And then just put the bolt back in the hole. Oh, I suppose for me, I've seen enough of them, I know where the bolts go, but you don't have to do it up tight, just a few turns in, quite a few in this case. This is going to make the job look really easy, okay, because I'm telling you now, the Euro 3s are by far the easiest. Of course, we've got to remove that. By far the easiest, right? No doubts whatsoever, right? What I'll do, I'll just gently, I don't want to yank the wiring. We could pull it right around out the way or whatever, but you know what, I'm happy with it there. And we haven't, um, you know, bent or manipulated the hell out of it in any way. And it's out of the way. Now on the Euro 4s, there's a heater pipe that comes behind here that's bolted on the back of the EGR valve. It's a bit different. Euro 3, this is further forward. Really easier to get the EGR and everything off. So we'll get to all that. We're gonna do that now anyway. And that's why I picked this vehicle, because it's going to be 
don't be mistaken, it's going to make it look really easy. I'm going to try and make it look hard because it's so easy. Um, okay, so two vacuum lines on the back of the EGR valve. So we'll get our big flat screwdriver we like for those. And get in behind those, lever those a bit while pulling with the other hand. That's one. It's the one with the white filter goes at the top, okay? And then there's one further down. If I can find it, give me an area. Okay, that's off as well. And we've got, I think, two on this model, two 12 mils. Been a while since I've seen a Euro through. I've got injectors and pipes there, so that's good. Because we don't keep a lot of those in stock. Euro 3s because they don't seem too often. Small people buying injectors for those these days, really. Well, not really, actually. Just not much of those at all whatsoever. So, taking out the bottom mounting bolt of this plate that goes on the side, which is similar, similar on the Euro 4s. You've got three bolts, three 12 mils on the side here. You have two at the top and one at the bottom. So it's very similar, and there's another vacuum line we've got to disconnect also. We'll get to that. So I'm just going to let that sort of hang there for the time being. Put the two bolts there. If you take the bolts off and put them in the order you've taken them off, furthest ones working your way out. You probably can't see what I'm saying up on the... Let me see what you can see. Yeah, you can't really see what I'm pointing to. But anyway, I'll put them up at the, on the, at the bottom of the windscreen on the shroud there. Put the ones that came off first the furthest toward the middle and as you work, and work your way up to the side so then you know what order they go back on. So with this, just one more vacuum line at the bottom. So we're just going to give that a pull and twist. Well, we're not going to just pull on the vacuum line. All right, so there it is. That's the bottom vacuum line. These are the two off the EGR valve. Filter one at the top. And they were the two plugs. One came off easy. This one was a bit harder. Just be careful. I've never had to purchase one of these, but I've heard people more on the Euro 4s that have, you know, done their own service or whatever. I don't know if you could even see that in the picture, what I was just trying to show you. It's a problem being the worker and not in the camera at the same time. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll go put that aside. I'm trying to give you too much information sometimes. Like I said, that's why you just got to keep watching all the other videos. And um, you'll gather all that information from the combination of everything you watch. Okay, so, yep, so I'm just going to grab, so get this EGR valve off, there's a bolt you've got to get to underneath here, I believe if I remember correctly, like I said, it's been a while, oh no, this is the, we'll get the throttle body off first, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, I always use, if you notice I use the wrong words, I did a video, I think yesterday or put up yesterday, whatever. And I had a look at it and right in the middle of the video I've said, I've called, I don't know, I called something the wrong thing or, oh, that's right on the wheel. It was on a wheel. And I said, oh, you know, check for side play. Instead of saying three and nine, you know, sides three o'clock, nine o'clock, you know what I'm saying? I've got a clock here, nine o'clock, three o'clock, right? Um, and up and down for wheel bearings, 12 and six, I said, Check it at 12 and 9 or 3 and 6 or something like that anyway. Anyway, I had it wrong. So, wrong again. Like I said, I've said before, I'm always wrong. Um, so, just be aware of that. No, not really. It was quite funny, actually. Someone wrote a comment on the YouTube channel. You just keep saying all these facts. It's so annoying. It's so annoying to listen to. I know. See what it's like for me when I've got to listen to myself to just have a quick listen before I put it up there and quite often I don't I just fingers crossed hope I didn't say the wrong thing and put it up there and sometimes I say the wrong thing and I just go whatever you know what I mean as long as it's not something that's catastrophically important okay so throttle body's coming off now but a boom we'll just go put that aside with those bolts in an orderly fashion Remember what I said, For what comes off first goes the furthest away, if you know what I mean. So, like I said, higher K engine, K 
315,000, more blow by, but it always looks worse around here. It's not too bad. You'll get to see more. It's the mess is at the joins generally. Uh, we lock the oil in the intake, it tends to keep washing the intake clean, if you know what I mean. Now you can see we've got the other bolt exposed. That mounts one of the ones that mount the EGR. We'll just get that out of the way. We'll make it an EGR removal and inject the video. There's not much to clean on the Euro 3s. You're about to see. This is kind of why I do like them. I mean, they're the oldest injectors, so that's not the best part. But look, they work well also. You know, they do work well. I don't really have a big problem with the injectors. They're just not as quiet as um, the later ones and that, so... I'm guessing there's some bolts over there. I can't see. I'm just going by feel. Well, that's tight. There's one, two, three. I'll just get the uh, impact driver to zip those off. Speed things up a bit. We could do time lapse, but um, some people just want to see it. Properly, if you know what I mean. Alright, so we've got two nuts and a bolt, plus the other bolt that went through the stay. Now that should just lift off like that. See what I mean compared to the um, later ones? There's a bit of mess here on the EJ, different configuration. There's a bit of mess there, but you know, it's still got to be clean. So this is the EJ valve, where on the other car, prop might even be the same part, I haven't ever taken notice of, I think it's probably different actually, but the other one it sits up here on the Euro 4, so this is a bit laid down and different and this is not too bad I can tell you, but all the oil is washing it through as well, which is why we lock the plate to reduce the soot and let the oil go through, it just kind of washes it and keeps it clean, you've seen on the other videos how well it works. Um, to get that off we need to undo these two 10mm bolts to then slide that off, so we may as well do that. Put a little quarter drive. Small bolts, small tools, right? Yeah, you don't need big tools for small bolts. You don't need half inch drive for anything on this job. Don't use half inch drive, you're just going to end up breaking something. It's um, 3 8 and quarter. Now, any small 10mm bolt heads, you should stick around your quarter drive, and that's for the length of the ratchet, you know, so you can't put too much leverage on it. Well, I'll give you the mail, you can still. I've heard it all, but um, so we're going to get these bolts out. And this is not where the plate goes. If you're going to put a flow reduction plate in, this is not where it goes, okay? Doesn't go at this end, it still goes at the other end. These are a little bit more tolerant to, um, I'm just gonna sit those up there, up on the sill at the top there. Let's pull that back a little bit. This should slide off now without too much hassle. I'll show you what it looks like, as you can see. Not too bad, but what's there, it's mainly the oil washing the soot through. Have a look at the other end. All right, so still better with less EGR. have a look in there you're not going to get to see in this one because I'm not going to move the camera but of course in a perfect world it'd be great to pull the manifold off and clean it but it's really not much at all the worst of it is right there at that opening and um, look it's clean there's no build-up there's no more than about two millimeters of build-up anywhere and um, if this vehicle to, was to have a solution put in place when I say solution, you know, like a plate with a cylinder hole that reduces the flow, it would be self-cleaning because you haven't got the soot going in there anymore. We're going to unplug this fuel filter, both the plugs on that carefully. 
All right, they're both unplugged now. And we're going to carefully slip this fuel filter, see if it comes up. That clamp wasn't even on, but there you go. Let me just uh, see if you can see what's going on. You can't quite, so I'll just zoom back a little bit. There we go. Um, this should just come up, but for whatever reason, it's not, and there's always a reason. You know what I mean? Always a reason. Yeah, so we're get, trying to carefully yank this up. It is. It's a matter of things over time. They get tight, you know. Dirt and debris get in between the in there and sort of help lock it in for you. So at this point, we're just going to tuck this out of the way, right? So that's out of the way of the job that we want to do. We don't need to disconnect it or anything. Doesn't mean we are or are not changing it as part of the job. We haven't talked about that one yet, so doesn't mean it has to be done as part of the job. It might have been done recently. Okay, so like the Euro 4s, you need to take the stay off the manifold there so you can get to number three and four. We, look, you can work around it. You know what, let's try and work around it with this job just to, for argument's sake, I would normally remove it out of the way anyway. Um, just gonna get in here with the impact driver and zip off some of these Best way to do that is with the impact driver. That way you're not twisting the pipes when you do it up. All right, it's meant to be five Newton meters. I can tell you that unless you've got a new clamp and those clamps, the bottom's about 30 bucks, the top's about 20 and the bolt's two or three bucks. So unless you've got a new, that's 50 bucks there. So unless you've got a new one, uh, it doesn't, five Newton meters doesn't work. And over time they squash. So I suggest you just nip it up until it stops sliding on the pipes as it has been, which is an idea. The good thing about these, it allows you to see more from one position. You can see it's the same two 10 mil nuts on a 120 Prada or a 150 or a later Hilux, you know what I mean? The same plate and bracket over the top, which isn't gonna come off too easily. Flat blade down in between the rubber. Give it a bit of a, bit of a tweak and hopefully it'll come off. Sometimes the rubber and the Plates separate, whatever, doesn't really matter. Well, it came off in one piece in the end. Right, so basically we've got all our EGR and everything off out of the way. And almost all our cl uh, clamps off the pipes. On the Euro 3, on number 4 fuel pipe, there's two 12 mil. There's two 12 mil bolts. Okay, so bit different on the other one, on the Euro 4. Can't get to it with that, so I'm gonna grab a 12 mil ratchet spanner. On the Euro 4, there's one 10 mil clamp, which don't forget to put that on there. You do need it. All the clamps are there for a reason. Stick with it. zip tie there for me aftermarket fix ups I think I'm pretty sure that was added on afterwards yeah I don't think they're standard probably someone had something off for something I don't know anyway just gonna have a good look at these pipes and try and work out whether this has ever been apart before and um, if it hasn't I'll put that clamp bolt there and that one come out by hand yep beautiful so we're going to try and get these pipes off without moving the stay the bracket that holds the manifold it's got a 10 mil bolt at the top and bottom not hard to take the top one out but the bottom one normally we loosen it off look you know how easy does it make it look once you've got all this gear off yeah um i don't know to me easy but you, if you don't do this all the time, you might go, hang on, wh where did all this go and whatever? So don't get sucked in going, oh, yeah, you know, it's easy, I'm going to do it. If it's not, you know what I mean? What I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to take this bracket off because it's just going to make it easier to get the valve cover on and off. I don't think we have to, but um, it's not going to be hard to do. So we'll just zip that off. It's only going to take a minute. 
and we can get to it, the pipes aren't in the way. On the Euro 4, you've got to use a 12mm crow's foot to get to it, but it doesn't, it's not in the way as much with this one. They're kind of a little bit in the way for the sake of a minute. Right. What was that, a minute or less? You, you Tom. You're sitting there looking at the clock. I hope you're sitting back in your cinema room on the big screen. Having a whatever drink tickles your fancy. So see that bracket? Oh, out of the way. So that's that out of the way. Just opens up the job a bit more. Two bolts, you know. And look, we can see there's been a bit of oil going on. So my concerns are, is this cover cracked? Doesn't look like it's coming from those top seals. They don't usually leak. The only time they leak, I'll, I'll put it out there actually. So that's not included in the kit and it's not a normal replacement part. As I said, they don't leak. The only time they leak is if you haven't cleaned, if you don't clean this cover, dirt and debris underneath that seal, you know, a little speck of sand or whatever, it's enough to hold the seal down a little bit. It's like a double seal, but, and then it'll just sweat. It won't leak, it'll just sweat, it'll be untidy. And you can pull it apart and change the seals and put it back together. If you don't clean it, it'll still leak, so. It's not about new seals. The only time you need to replace those is if you damage them. If you rip this cover off over these and you're rough, you just gotta go slow and gentle. We're gonna to get to that. So we'll grab the genuine Toyota Pro's foot spanner, 17 mil. I don't know if there's anyone else in the country that's got one of these. Complete waste of money. All right, there it is. You see? See where it says Toyota there? Toyota. When I bought it, they'd never sold one or something apparently, so there you go. Many years ago that was, but the only part that I use it for, it's a half inch drive, and I like to use it. I'm gonna go left handed to show you how Uncle I am left handed, just because I can. Normally things work out better when you don't do left handed stuff when you're right handed. <laughs> Can't even get it on there. What's going on there? Come on. All right, that's on. I prefer to do it from the front, but it's getting to be a long reach and I don't want to climb in there, so. I'm gonna go down the side, see how that works out. And go back to the right. When you use the right tools, it just makes it easy. Don't think because I did it so easy with this that you can just get your seven and mil spanner. And you probably can, someone will say, oh, I did. Well, you probably can. You'll get lucky. It's, there's a lot of luck with a lot of things, right? But your luck eventually runs out and a lot of people have trouble trying to undo, undo these um, with a spanner, you know. You spanner, what were you thinking you spanner? See there's a spanner and it doesn't always work out that well. So, so far looking at this job, I don't think this has ever been opened before. I'm not sure yet. My opinion of that could change. It's just an opinion because I don't know. Um, I've got a fair idea, I've seen a few. But you'll get our other crazy book. We've only got our Sid Chrome one left, which is okay. I'm not that excited. I wouldn't send you off to buy a Sid Chrome set, which is why I've sourced these cheaper, a few other brands and whatever that I can throw in for free with the injector kit when I've got them in stock. I've just, they've all gone again. We've sent out dozens of them, but um, I've ordered, I think, 50 here and 50 there and whatever. We're just waiting. I don't know if there's any in the country what the story is, but uh, we're waiting, 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 waiting. So. So look, you know, if someone tells me you can get them off eBay for about uh, 18 bucks or something. So there you go. It's just another delivery you need to wait for. Or you can, if you buy the injector kit off us and they come in stock before you do your job, you can just ask me, oh, you know, have you got them yet? And if I haven't, well, I haven't. But if I have, I'll just send you one. Yeah. No big deal. We're pretty relaxed about it all. So number, we're gonna do number one fuel pipe. We like to use, again, the half inch to undo it. Whatever you do, don't go from your fuel pipe and touch on your battery positive, okay? Be very careful how you do this. So either disconnect your battery. We don't, because we may want to do a compression test, right? So I'm used to doing it this way. You've just got to be make sure you've got it covered. Be very careful or disconnect, okay? Disconnect's your wisest decision. Right, so that's number one fuel pipe undone. Let's see if we can get to number two with that. So number two with one in the way is always a problem. So once you crack number one, should I bring you around this side? You're just going to be in the way. You know what I'm doing. 
Maybe I'll bring you around the other side. No, because then I'll just be in the way of the camera. So let's just leave it as it is. You know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just going to reach in there and get number one. By hand, I'm done. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I thought it was loose enough. I oh, know that was number two. I was grabbing the wrong one. <laughs> Lucky I'm just the apprentice. Okay, number one. Both ends are undone and the pipe's just sitting there because it's stuck onto this clamp so as soon as we go. And just be aware with fuel systems, it can be dangerous as well, you know, pressure. So, with these, once you've got, uh, there's never, the pressure just releases as soon as you crack the nut, there's no pressure, you know, so, it's a non-issue. But if you were to not have it connected and try and start it, look, it's not going to build fuel pressure either. So it's not the usual. You do need to be very careful working on diesels, the fuel pressure involved and what can happen. But it's kind of not really relevant here. So number two, all right, we're just going to twist it as far as we can till that comes around to the pipe and it hits the next pipe that goes from the supply pump to the, uh, to the pump. All right. And I should do a video on this one actually and show that clamp that was missing on the other highlights but it could be different because this is a Euro 3 I can't remember exactly what they look like pretty deep down in there what's going on so anyway um, so that's the bottom number two undone so I'll undo that by hand the rest of the way hopefully yep This is the part that's risky, like we've cleaned this and just the amount of crap here and inside the, um, in the nut and I can see it on the end of the The risk of contamination is massive, okay? That's why, look, you know, I think, how do I show you that? How do I get you to understand that, how important it is? It's really super, the risk is massive, okay? Um, we're just going to grab a couple of caps. Just going to blow compressed air for a second. If I've sent you injectors and they've come with some caps, whatever they're not cleaned or ready to use they're dirty filthy things probably been used before people are sending them back to me with their old injectors right you know so we can strip those down and have a look as you may have seen in other videos um we just chuck them in the kit you need to clean them and make sure obviously if you see them i hope you figure that out it's pretty obvious with the cleanliness we've been talking about so we just cap those as they um as they come off now we're going to try and get to number three fuel pod without removing that state just for a entertainment value i think we can with this one just depends all depends what angle that it ends up on see because right there it's next to the stay so let's let's try and crack it and the it may hit the um i think it's no, it's not going to happen because we're already so close to the stay but we can turn the crow's foot around back to front and that might give us a little bit of yeah and it did so. okay Bada boom, bada bing, how easy was that? So that's what I'm saying, these are so, they're almost a pleasure to work on the Euro throws, you know? To the point that, you know what? They are, they are cheaper to work on. They only, it is cheaper to get this job done than a Euro 4, of course. The Prado 150 is the dearest. It is the hardest to work on. The engine's further back. This whole, tri it's, oh, it's a big pain, really. It is painful. It's a lot tighter. Okay, so number three pipe off. Dirty corroded old number three is off. Get another one of our caps and put it in place. If you're fairly quick, you don't need caps. If you're just doing the injector job and you're only gonna have it apart a reasonably short period of time. Another phone call. I'll just take this one quickly. Hello, how you going? Good, good. 
Commonwealth. Commonwealth? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. No worries. Thank you. No probs. Thanks. Okay. Correct. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Is that what it says on there? Does it tell you that? Or? Yeah, that's it. Spot on. All right. Thank you. So, yeah. Just a quick one. Okay, so number four fuel pipe. Can we get to number four? I think we can. Look at that, didn't even need to move the stay out of the way. So, I'm not sure, it's been a while. I'm not sure if I normally do that on these or not, but you certainly don't need to if you've got the right configuration of tools. Okay, so number four's cracked loose also. So I'm not running rushing around, right? Because that's how we work. We don't do that. Because that's how you stuff things up and forget things and whatever. So slowly thinking, you know. But I'm going to be a bit smoother and quicker than some because I've done a few before. Right? Unfortunately. But. Capping number four. So that's what I was saying, you know, the caps, it's more if you're gonna pull the manifold off and everything, which on a Euro 3, look at it, you just gotta take this pipe off now. There's no corner noses. How good's that, guys? Like, don't we wish we were Euro 3 in some ways? Imagine a, a 150 Prado with a three litre 1KD awesome with out an EGR cooler with a pipe and just Euro 3 setup. How good's that? Hey, jeez. Retrofit? No, I don't think so. While we're at it, I just thought I'll mention, so if you're going to take your manifold off, you're going to take this fuel return line off, right? It runs down under here. There is a, when I talk about the return line gasket, there's a little double-sided washer gasket that goes there. We supply that. If we say inlet manifold and the gasket, that's what I'm talking about, that gasket there. So here we are. We've got the pipes off already, blitzing it without even trying, you would think, you know. Ah, what an easy job, mate. I can do this in no time. Well, you know, if you've got one of these... The rougher you are, the quicker you can do it, right? There's a little slot at the top of the cover there to put the screwdriver in and get those loose. So go ahead and do that. Not too. No. Yeah, we haven't seen any issues with glow plugs on these. I just want to mention though, I did have someone that told me about us glow plugs on a 1KD that Apparently, was it one or two were broken? Um, if you watch this video, whoever it was, can you please write the details in the comments below? Now, it wasn't any of our cars, anyone in our group, anything I've ever seen. This is filthy, this thing. I can tell, see by all the carbon on the inside of the nozzle seals. So anyway, we're gonna go and put those aside. Right guys, this is, this is gonna go on YouTube but only to the VIP group at the moment. You know, one of the ones, you've got to have the link to watch it sort of thing, so it's not public. So, but look, later on down the track, we might just have to open it up and go, look, you know, right, decisions I've got to make, you know, hard decisions, but, you know, we might have to do that at a later date. We'll just see how we go. That's what I'll do with that, pull that off, just twist it around. No need to take it off. Or and you know where it is, where it's going to be. Now all we've got is the one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, ten mil, ten bolts and two nuts. So what we'll do, let's set up the impact driver and the uni joint. Let's try and hit them all with the um, impact driver and get them all off. Try and get them off a bit quicker and see if it works out. Might not work out. But we'll give it a try. Okay. We will give it a try. See if we can reach in there. And we'll go from this side. Back to first. Then we're just going to sit them up on top. Now we can get rid of the uni joint. 
That's all the uni joint was for the back to it. That adds more weight to it, it hasn't been pulled apart before. Usually, oh that was pretty loose. That adds more weight to it, it hasn't been pulled apart before. Usually, as I say, usually you're gonna find things over tight here or there. The back ones, they won't come out, you know what I mean? Where these, cause the gasket squashed for so long over time. That one's fairly tight though, but there's no absolute, but we'll just, you know, once I'm at the end of it, I'm gonna grab that nut before we lose it. But in my opinion at the moment, this hasn't been apart before. You know, we'll learn more as we get through the job. So, there is another nut down there. Uh, let's see if we can get it out without losing it. That's what we want to do. Happy days. We'll go put that aside. And there's two nuts, and that's where they go. Second one from the back on the driver's side. Same on the Euro 4 and 5, whatever. Okay. Some people love the way I do that, eh? I've got to say I don't get excited by it, but if you do, happy days. Just a couple of bolts. Okay, that's the nut where it goes there. We already got that. Okay. I think when I go and clean all this up, I might might stop the video or whatever. I don't know if you... I mean, you probably fast forward through a bit, but you do miss stuff, because see, I'm just talking the whole time. Talking, talking, talking. And there can be some little tips and stuff in there, so the information you're missing out on if you fast forward through and then you do the job and then you ring me halfway through and go, oh, what do I do with that? You didn't watch the video. Oh, I did, I did. Oh, well, you didn't watch the whole video. You didn't watch it twice, three times. Become an expert before you work on your vehicle. You know, oh, you done one before. Right, that's the point where you just gently crack it loose. We're not lifting it right up yet. We just want to crack the, the two. That's where the sil only places where the RTV silicon should be. Now, once we've done that, it shouldn't be glued anywhere else, which makes it relatively easy to get off. We've just got to kind of keep it level, right? Try and keep it level and gently wiggle back and forth, right? So from the oil cap and the hump here, I'll generally just, I'll start with the wiggling already because in case any parts are stuck, right? Because I want to try not to ram that cover against the seal. See how we did that? And when we get to the solenoids, side to side, right? Side to side, gently back and forth, side to side, just wiggle. So anything that's caught comes over, not rips chunks of the rubber out, right? We're virtually there, right? There it is. How many lack of oil changes have you had? That is fucking healthy. Right, there's inside the cover. So we'll go and give that a good clean up. This gasket is rock hard. Rock hard. I don't think it's been, I still don't think it's ever been off. We're gonna know more when we start cleaning up this mess. Look at that, you know. You know guys, all it needs is all changes. Heaps of all changes and the thing's gonna be clean. Everything's gonna work right and last longer, you know. I really don't think it's been off. The amount of oil around the, it just looks way too original. Um, the washers on the return line. Actually, let me, yeah, it could have been off early days too, I suppose. Could have had a 40,000 K valve clearance. What a waste of time. Um, that return line washer's twisted, so is that one. Usually first use, that doesn't happen. Look at, there's even globs of oil, greasy oil hanging off the bottom there. Yeah, pretty messy, pretty messy. This has probably got blow-by, I'd say, on at least one. That's probably a contributor to the mess as well, but enough oil changes and it will help keep it clean. It won't stop your oil pickup from blocking, but it will help keep it clean. So this is the part we really love, getting dirty and messy. So what I'm gonna do, I reckon, is go put some gloves on. Cheers, Scott, and um, now what I'll do, I'll go and wash the yeah, this is the thing, I don't want to bore you to death, but this is going to go for ages, but some of you want to see it, don't you? So what are we going to do? Look, there's no point in me showing you how I wash the valve cover. So what I'm going to do, to save some time, I'm going to stop it there. 
and I'll rejoin it as soon as I start back under here or whatever. I'm going to go clean the valve cover first because we need that to be clean and dry for reassembly and that could be in an hour or two so we want it washed, blown dry and sitting out in the sun to dry the rest of the way every last bit before we go to put it back on so I'll catch you soon. Alright peoples, so mate I've been cleaning, 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 I don't know, it feels like I've been cleaning for a couple of hours, it's um it's past lunch time, I haven't had lunch yet though of course, but well, look what we found here, this is awesome. Now you know, you can tell some things when people have worked on it, confirmed when you find a pen lid covered in grease, um, I'd say someone's worked on it before, I don't know how a pen lid gets down in there, but mm. anyway, so look I've cleaned the valve cover really well, look when I say really well, I'm a bit over cleaning, so it's all going to stop somewhere. Uh, if you want things, if you want to bring in cars that are, haven't been maintained that well, we'll put it that way. That's what we'll call this. Hasn't been maintained that well, right? Look, you know, it's been taken a Toyota, you know, and in theory, that should be the place to take your vehicle to get it looked after right. They're the specialists, right? Well, if they're the specialists, why are they quite often leaving vehicles in a condition like this? That's my question, right? So, with that picking on, you know, when they say oh, I've taken it to Toyota, it's not Toyota Japan or Toyota Motor Corporation, it's a Toyota dealership that, you know, individually run, there's guidelines to follow and whatever. So what I'm doing now, I'm just trying to clean up some mess, or right? I'm trying to have a bit of a clean up before we pull the injectors out. Right, but, Look, I'm not, I don't like cleaning, so that's why I don't do EGR cleans anymore, okay? This one, just for the video, okay? Because I just wanted to um, show you a Euro 3 spec, what it's like. So what I like to do, this is so messy, before I even pull the injectors and open the ports and whatever, I just want to give it a bit of a clean up. And I am not going to spend hours cleaning these parts. I already spent, I've just spent a lot of time scrubbing the valve cover, the EGR valve, you know, 300,000 Ks of baked on, you know, there's still a little bit of staining on there and I'm actually not going to polish it up as good as some, as some of them that you've seen, right? It's not going to happen, okay? There's no, there's got to be an end to the time I spend on cleaning. why we're doing the video. If you want it shiny clean, don't worry, it's very clean. I'll show you how clean it is. It's clean enough, no problem. But, you know, we used to clean and, you know, I suppose, let's say, you know, you've got to have some pride in your work and um, now there's no pride in EGR cleaning, okay? So we'll do the bare minimum of what it needs to be done. So what I'm doing here, I just want to wipe the perimeter and trying to wipe it so that minimal falls into the engine. Doesn't really matter, it's going to get an oil change in that anyway as well, but we just want to get all this muck cleaned away, if you know what I mean. I don't care really where it lands in the engine bay, we're going to wash it again. I'd rather it out than in. Oh, and there's muck on top of the cam things, I'm not cleaning that, it's not happening, it's not part of this job. I'm not here to clean the engine or rebuild the engine, whatever. The way to prevent that is oil changes, which I already mentioned earlier. Oil changes people, right? That's what cleans your engine. Non-oil changes is what makes it dirty, and oil changes are what makes it clean, right? It's just gonna run better and last longer clean. I mean, why wouldn't you do it? Oil's cheap compared to an engine rebuild. Right? So, oil changes. And of course, it's gonna have blow-by. We're gonna get to that in this video. It's, it's gonna have blow-by, you know? I'm saying it's going to, because I'll put my money on it, you know? Right. I'll put my money on it's got blow bys in the seats, injector seats are leaking when we say blow by, that's what we're talking about. It looks like the original, I don't know what they did when they're in here, because it looks like all the original silicon on this head to me. Right, so I don't know how much fun it is watching me cleaning. So, what I might do, I suppose I'll still talk the information, right? So, 
That's not good enough yet. We're getting there, right? I'm just going to scrape that show you how I'll scrape that silicon out of the way. I've got this little flat blade screwdriver that's really not sharp on the ends. It's actually a Citrone brand one. Again, something that's more than 20 years old. Right. It's been used for a lot of things, but it's really not sharp on the ends. And I like to use that to pull and scrape this, these bits of silicon out of the way. So there's one. Like I said, I don't really care where it goes on the outside. It's going to get a wash down. It's going to be a lot cleaner than when it came here. That's my guarantee. It's going to be a lot cleaner when it leaves than it was when it got here. Right. Just need that light. So we're going to just finish cleaning this. Get the injectors out and then I think it's lunch break, bro. Have some lunch. Anne's got to eat. This does look very discoloured, this silicon and whatever. So I'd say it's most likely the original stuff. Just doing a bit of cleaning there while we're at it. Quite messy. Okay. All I'm cleaning is the perimeter. Right. Even these injector clamps, you know what? Just more time cleaning those. Because, what, because it hasn't had oil changes? Because of the lack of maintenance and you're disrespecting the vehicle, I've got to spend more time doing crappy cleaning jobs. No. You know what? You want it dirty? You can have it dirty. We'll put the clamps back on the way they are. Right. And I realise that, you know, you may have brought the vehicle second hand and might not have been you, but you know what? Good oil changes will clean up the engine anyway. And people ask, you know, can we use these different, um, you know, additives and whatever to clean it? Sure, go ahead. Doesn't bother me. The companies that manufacture them will love it. But if you buy a vehicle second hand, check that it's got a full service history, oil changes. Oh, you know, it's missed in the book. Oh, yeah, no, it was done. I didn't know why they don't, they didn't fill it out. Yeah, rubbish. They didn't fill it out because you didn't get it done. Because you didn't see the value in getting the vehicle serviced because you were selling it soon. They're making a lot of mess here, don't worry. We'll clean. Any mess we make, we'll clean up. So there was two dobs of silicon on the other side, just how it should be and another two at this side. So I still believe this cover hadn't been off. It was it was rock hard, even though we found the pen lid down in here, sitting on the glow plug rail. What a mess, seriously. Gonna have to grab another rag soon, I think. Wrong color rag, anyway. Can't stand black rags. You know, keep the black rags for something else. I don't know, like the companies that do the rags. Just uh, give us the light coloured rags, then we can see when they're getting dirty. But look, that's fairly uh, good around the perimeter. That's all I wanted to do for now. And we can... Um... Alright guys, so I've just been cleaning a bit, as you saw. I just ended that and took a bit of a break. Um, not long. Now, we've got to get the return line off, so we need back to business, mate, back to getting this job done. Instead of complaining about all the mess. Yep, and I will complain about dirt and mess. So, if you've got a dirty vehicle, or it hasn't been maintained, prepare for it. And if you don't like it, or you can't handle that, then probably be better if you don't bring it. Don't bring it. Okay, I want a 17 mil. Hang on, I want to use this. I'll use the big bar to get a bit more momentum. So, well, yeah, I said don't use half inch drive on these, didn't I? Well, you can use them to undo the fuel pipes, and you can also use it undo these. Just makes it a bit easier, right? You don't have to, but I just prefer to go like that and make it really easy, if you know what I mean. No stress. Do not do it up with them, just to undo it, you know what I mean? Just to undo it. Now I've got to go clean all that gunky grease out of my socket because it's so filthy.
And if you're thinking, oh, you're a mechanic and you're complaining that it's dirty, well, that's fair enough, you can think that, but I'm not a mechanic. I'm a vehicle technician, and technicians don't like getting dirty, okay? Grease monkey mechanics can do to get dirty. It's just unnecessary. So I prefer not to do it. I'd rather tell you how I feel about it. Educate you on keeping it clean and serviced. Right, 12 mil, bang, right? Let's see if that comes undone by hand now. Beautiful, it's gonna come. It's probably gonna come all the way out, no problem. I'll tell you why. Because nobody's touched, taken it off before. Nobody's touched it. Right. Just leave that bolt sitting in place. It's just about undoing it. You know what I mean? Just undoing it. Now the other four. Put that socket back on there so it can get dirty again. Or well, maybe not, we'll do them by hand. Hopefully this works out. Oh yeah, that's good. Which kind of confirms if it comes out and they're not all jammed up, probably hasn't been off before. Because generally when there's a problem, it's because someone's touched it, funnily enough. It's always caused by people. This is what I'm saying. So what's this caused by? People not doing oil changes. Whether it's the owner not taking it for the oil changes or the workshops or places not actually carrying out the work that was requested. I need to get a tool for that, it's still too tight to do by hand. The work hasn't been done. Right? The oil changes haven't been done. It doesn't really matter who, why, but it's see. It's not the fault of the engine. And I'm allowed to complain because I see heaps that are clean. They're nice and clean and it's much more pleasurable to work on something that's clean, right? I don't know, some people don't get clean. You see how they keep their cars living in a pigsty? I just don't get that. Do you keep your house like that? You bed, your bedroom, and everything's a dirty pigsty, you know? You, you know, your backyard swimming pool, is it green full of algae, dirt, and sand, or is it clean? No, it's clean, right? So clean your car as well. Right? Makes sense? Please don't bring those dirty feral vehicles to me that's why I'm doing the video that's what I'm telling you so straight up front telling you I'm not chasing any business right I'm not going to hold it against you either it's all good if you want to have a dirty feral thing that's fine just don't make me part of it all right everything you touch turns to sludge so there it is, right? All the bolts are out. As it is, we're going to take it like that and plonk it on the bench. Dirty, feral thing. Needs cleaning. Right. So that's the fuel return line off. Or the leak back pipe, whatever you want to call it. Right. People call it different things. I don't really care. I'll call it whatever I want. As long as I know what I'm talking about. Fuel return line makes sense because the fuel returns that away. Sorry about that. Right. You back over there out the way. Sorry about that. But officially, it's not the leakage pipe, it's the leak back pipe. It's not a leakage, mate. When it, there could be a leakage if it's leaking, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you've got a leakage there, you'll know about it if you've been to that place in Moorabbin. And not the good place in Moorabbin, because there's a good place in Moorabbin. The best and the worst, both in the same suburb. So you'd be careful where you go in Moorabbin, all right? If you've been there, central, well, mm, you heard a lot of leak back stories there, that's for sure, from people that have been there. Everybody's got the same story to tell as far as leak back goes. Engines filling up with oil and blowing smoke and getting sold turbos. Nasty. Okay, let's speed this up a bit. Get the zip zip tool happening. And zip these dirty, filthy clamps off. I hope you're having a laugh. <laughs> At my expense.
dirty, filthy animal. You know what they say, isn't there a really dirty, filthy animal? Anyway, we'll get these clamps off, stop talking crap. I'm just going to need to move this out of the way a little bit as well. Come on. So there's always things in the way. I'm going to get these clamps, so I'm going to go. Four, three, filthy thing, two, sludge or armor, one, okay, go and ditch those over there on the bench. Filthy sludger armor. Okay, now this is the important part. This is where you get to see which ones have got the blow by. The seat's leaking, the mess everywhere. Okay, who's going to put their money on number one? That's stuck. Two twists, that's good. Three twists and four twists, so number one could be an issue. Maybe we'll work from the back to the front, eh? Here we go. Bada boom, bada bing. I'll just show you those. All right. There it is, how it should normally look. The oil hasn't gone past, but you see the original copper seat. I don't know if you can see it from that end anyway. See, copper, never been out. Three hundred and fifteen thousand k's never been out. So for the people that you know, oh, you know these engines are need this and they need that well sometimes they don't need it there's another one right it's just the mess i made dragging it out the hole the biggest issue with this engine so far is lack of oil changes because that's an oil gallery there look at that right i'm gonna bring it a bit closer for you terrible right look at that sludge there right look at that there what a damn mess look at that So yeah, there's extra charges when the vehicle's like this because of the cleaning and the time and what's required. The good news is three came out. There's another one, full on sludge or armor. I'll show you that one as well. Right. Look at that. Filth. And the original copper washer, of course, eh? 056 0567 had those. Okay, 2009 onwards, didn't have copper. I should say they didn't have plain copper. They had copper with the coating, as you've seen in other videos. Now, we've got to get number one out. Number one's a little bit stuck at the moment. So it's going to have blow-by. Now, as much as everybody likes to bag people when they get shifters out and whatever, I'm going to show you the easiest way to get it out. These injectors are rubbish anyway. favorite shifter then this one won't be hard to get out because it hasn't got brass washers brass washers massive problem brass washers is what put wear and tear on this pry bar right and our trusty old sid chrome 12 inch shifter now this won't be hard to get out but i'm just more showing you the technique i've done it before this would probably just pop if i went like that right it's moving already right but if you've got one that's really stuck, you get this bracket out of the way if you can. Right. And you get on the inlets, you turn the camshaft lobes down so you're not going to slip and damage it, and you twist back and forward like that while applying pressure. Like I said, this is going to be an easy one, but I just want to show you the technique of getting them out. Okay, now we've tried a lot of different things and tools and whatever. The best thing is that and a lot of patience, right? You're going to need a lot of patience if you've got brass washers. A lot of patience. Okay, so pry bar, we'll put that down for now. I think we're pretty right. We should be able to slip this out now. Twist and pull, twist and pull. 
and there it is, right? No surprise. We figured we'd probably have a blow by on one. Look at that mess, right? Terrible. Been leaking for ages, right? So, nasty. So, when you've got blow by, it's even more important to have oil changes. Not that it's going to solve your problem, I'm not going to tell you that, because it's not, but that cooks the oil, right? Yep, terrible. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a break. Keep cleaning up this mess, right? You don't need to watch me clean this, you know? We're going to get the dowel, we're going to get the strips of rag, we're going to spray degreaser on the rag, in and out the holes, swapping rags, this and that. We're going to spend an hour or two, whatever. A lot of it takes to get those ports clean. Give it a bit of a clean up. We're going to clean up those clamps like I said I wasn't going to. I'm going to do, again, I'll be cleaning for the next two hours, like the last two hours before this. So this job, pretty straightforward. But the cleaning's ridiculous, right? If we didn't have the cleaning, if we didn't have to clean much, yeah, a few hours and she's done. Bada boom, bada bing. Anyway, heaps of cleaning time on this one, right? So that's the problem we've got. Heaps of cleaning. So, gonna go take a break now. And I'll join the next video on once I've got the cleanliness to a point. I might even um, check the valve clearances. I've got that in other videos, you can check that. Um, do the checks that I'm going to do, write down the conversation codes, prepare the injectors and I'll start rolling again when we're ready to drop them in and put it back together. Right guys, thanks so far. Alright, so, you know, plenty more cleaning been going on. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. We love cleaning. You know what? Might as well start a cleaning business. You know what I mean? Anyway, right, so this is what I've been doing for a while. What else have I cleaned? You know, so we've cleaned all the EGR parts, the valve cover, the fuel return line. You know, it's fuel system inside, so kind of like the outside's got to be clean too. It's only the return, but it can still cause problems, so. Right, uh, fuel return line, all the hollow bolts, the uh, clamps and the bolts and the washers, you know, gave them all a, we'll call it a good clean, a quick clean, a bit of a clean in the manifold there. Plenty of cleaning been going on, right? Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And this is the filthy one, right? Just going to get another rag. And every now and then you can just get your torch and your mirror. That's how I do it. It's easier than climbing up there to have a good close look each time. That one's looking pretty good. That one's, yep, it's, uh, it's getting better. Anyway, I'm just doing that. So. There's no point watching, you know what to do. Keep cleaning. Alright guys, tell you what, the amount of cleaning I've done on this, it is ridiculous. It's nearly 3.30pm, so I'm going to get interruptions from the kids. Been on this all day. Um, everything's pretty well clean. Well, as clean as I'm prepared to clean. I've spent hours on it. It's definitely good enough. Ports are clean. You know, that was cactus. All the parts are clean, so I'm in a system now. Everything's laid out, pre-prepared, injectors. So if you're doing this job, obviously, I've sort of shown you how to pull it apart if you like in this one. We're, you know, showing you how to clean parts. I don't need to do that, do I? And we're going to show you how to put it back together. So I've got the inject... Don't forget to note down your conversation codes off the top of your injectors. You can do it later once they're in, but certainly before you put the intercooler on. Um, I'll lay them out on the bench and take a photo is the current way we do them. Um, so... Now that we're here and ready to do this, I'm just going to take a really quick look down the injector ports and make sure 100%. Actually, I'll do it with the mirrors easier. Just make sure everything's clean still because it's been probably 20 minutes since I cleaned them in case anything's fallen in there. That is beautiful. Beautiful. I don't know if you can see that. I'll turn around. Jeez, I don't know if that's going to... Yeah, too hard anyway. Beautiful, like a mirror, right? Look, I'll be honest, like, it probably doesn't matter if there's one little speck or a couple of specks of carbon. I've seen a lot of that before. I think it's a non-issue, but why? Why would you? I'm going to drop one other point I want to make as well, actually. See these seats with the earlier injectors? Right, they do look different. 
Why does that not want to focus? What's going on there? That's better. See those, they're all shiny. They look like a set of uh, Baileys. A set of Baileys washers, but they're not. They're all shiny. It is copper underneath. So these seats, I was talking about earlier, they are still copper. They've just got a coating over them. And some of the coatings on the junior ones look like, make them look like alloy. And some make it look like that, like they're uh, chrome of some sort. So just drop them down there, dry is the way that, you know, the Toyota procedure is that, you know. So if you bear them a diesel, you might want to put some, you know, a whole heap of goopy anti seize on it now. And that's fine if you want to do that. And it's fine for them. This is how we put our injectors in. See, there it is there. It's all clean, dry. We lube the O-ring. Right. Probably didn't focus, but it doesn't really matter. Right. Like that. Four. Three. Don't force it past the O-ring, you don't want to sort of catch Just give it a little twist and a bit of gentle. Sometimes, you know, because they're a bit tighter now, the actual injector itself can be tight. It's not necessarily the O-ring, so just a bit of a gentle push. Always twisting, it's all lubricated. As I said, they've made them a bit tighter. See how that one, look, the head, they vary as well, but some of these, they used to be really sloppy, right? A lot of them are a tighter fit now, but obviously they had to allow for worst case scenario with the sizing of the port. So I think at some point they, you know, when they made them bigger, see that one, there's a bit of movement as there is with this one and that one even less, but this one's the tight one. So they've probably gone up to a size that allows for the tightest port, if you know what I mean. Anyway, we've got the return line clean and the new washers. These are single use only, these washers on these bolts. Of course they come as part of the injector kit. They're expensive, expensive little suckers. Right. So just get those started by hand. So all this has all been cleaned up and whatever. So I spent hours cleaning this. Like Normally this would come off fairly clean. It's just got a bit of oil on it. That's why the cleaner the oil and everything the better. There's no real need to clean it. You're just going to, um, there's no point to it. You know, it's just fuel on the inside, oil on the outside. It's going to be the same as soon as you start the engine. In this case, it was, I would have liked to not clean it, but it was way too dirty and uh, needed a bit of, bit of love, so. so. Let's get it all started by hand, and that will basically, as I've said in other videos, you gotta make sure you get the alignment right, so you might wanna watch a video that says injector alignment, okay? Right, so we just kind of use that to centralise. Just give it a wiggle as you tighten, just by finger, and that way it'll centralise in there, and that should be right. It usually is, but not always. All right, so while it's loose, you can actually move the injector back and forth like that, see that? So what we want to do, slowly tighten that while doing so, and as you go, it'll reduce how much it moves. And it'll kind of centralise, if you know what I mean. Right, but it might not be right. So how are we going to double check that? How are we going to check if the alignment's right? Because if we torque all this down, we torque it down and it's out, then we've got to release it all to move them and whatever because you won't get the pipes on because the alignment's not right. And these, remember what I said, that both these seats, can we use the O-rings, but the seats on the injector, and these gaskets here, they're single use only. So, the little washers under the injector or gaskets or seats, whatever you call it, they're about six bucks each. So there's 24 bucks. And these single use only gaskets are $13 each. I'm talking retail pricing to give you an idea. So about a hundred bucks worth of parts if you do these up and things aren't right. 
Okay, so we've got all that started by hand. Now, if you watch the other video, you already know all this, but you know what? It pays to know it again. You know, I'm not doing these up with a, I'm not zipping these, you know, completely. With this, I'm just, just till they stop light, lightly on the trigger. My tool, I know what I'm doing. But you just do it slowly by hand. I'm just trying to do it a bit quicker to get the video done for you, alright? Tell you what else we'll do. We'll get the light back over here so you can see what's going on. That might help, eh? How about, how about that, huh? Hang on. How about that, eh? Beautiful. Right, so everything's sitting in place. The alignment looks good. But we haven't got a lot to compare to, you know? You can look this way, look that way. So... We always, sorry compressor. We always use our nice clean lubricated spare valve cover. That's probably got cracks on it somewhere. Got a couple of spares here. Oh yeah, it's got a little bit of cracks on the back. Yeah, yeah, back corner. Anyway. So what we do is, as I've explained in other videos, check the alignment using the cover. So you just use your cover. Like I said, there's plenty of lube on there. Don't take the red caps off for this. Don't take them off to you to the last minute, right? And don't force the cover down with the caps on there either because you won't get it back up again. And you come around this side and you can see four is perfect, three is almost perfect, as two is almost perfect, and one, they're all almost perfect. But I just want to show you, I've showed you before in other videos, but I'm going to show you what I do. There's lots of different ways to do things. I'm not saying this is the best way, but with the cover and the caps there, you can just kind of go, okay, I want that one to go a little bit backwards and just give it a, you can lever against, you know, the cup, you're not going to hurt the cover there and the cap of the injector, right? Like this one's virtually perfect anyway, but I'm just going to, just going to like, you know, they're just perfect now, right? So I've just, because because everything's loose, right? It allows the angle of the injector to move a little bit, and obviously you get your leverage from doing it here. I'll just give that little give it a little twist. It's only pushing on the red cap and the inside of that hole. I don't, it's not going to damage anything. It's just you know, it's just cast plastic, whatever, right? So that's that alignment's all perfect. So now we're going to carefully get that cover off, and because it's lubricated, it isn't going to be hard at all whatsoever. Right? It's going to be nice and easy. Bang, just the gentle thing, gentle as always. Get that out of the way, we don't need that anymore. I'm gonna go grab the torque wrench, because we wanna lock it down, Eddie. Uh, we need some tools, okay. I'll take my deep breach 12 mil off the impact driver. What's the torque setting for the injectors, guys? You should know. If you're watching the video, you should have looked it up first, so then you pass the test. So if you haven't, hit pause, go and have a look at them all and see if you can remember. We're going to go 22. If you're not sure if it's worn off on your tool or something, and I don't mind if it's one more, you know, 22, 23. Look, I prefer not to go to 25. And I'd rather be over than under, so don't go down to 20. So try and try and get it about right. Alright, so part of boom. Just gonna give them a little bit so that we get them all in the right position when it's gonna go click. Because ideally you wanna be on the move. You don't want to sort of have to stop and then start again click. You want to be on the move is the correct way to something and we don't really want to have to be undoing them again mm -hmm. doing it twice or changing washes or anything like that so I reckon that I don't know how much further that's gonna go but I think this is it right you ready bingo right as soon as it clicks stop I'll double check them all anyway as I normally do oh just before I hit that hose not the best judgment so you got to watch out for that so for that reason, we'll just go. Okay. There's no point double checking them really, but we're gonna just double check them because that's how we roll. Okay. Just 
going to go. So that, that one actually turned again, right? Which they do that a bit, right? So that's why I kind of, I'll go. Right, so maybe they squash a bit. Whatever, so. They're not actually turning most of the time. It's just me going click, click, making sure. I'm happy. They're torqued down, that's how I do it. I've never had an issue, right? With genuine parts done with that procedure, it just works. Why reinvent the wheel? Toyota said to do it that way. So that's how we're doing it. Other people in workshops might want to invent other ways to do things. Now we're going to drop down to 16 Newton meters. Should have asked you what it was, but if you are onto it, good. 16, maybe 17, somewhere there anyway, right? Now these ones are a bit of a pain. Why, why, why? Well, these little washery things, these big bolts, the 17 mil heads, they tend to catch on the outside of that gasket and twist it. There's nothing you can do about it. You can make sure they're clean, there's no burrs, put oil on them, everything. That's what I did. Um, but it doesn't always work out. Let's try our luck. Usually when someone else hasn't worked on it, it works okay. But let's just see, eh? So far, so good. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay, that one's beautiful. That's how it should go. There's someone that really loves the way I say it. Beautiful. That's why I do it, okay? I'm going to keep doing it. Because he's a top bloke, and every time he hears it, he laughs. He loves it, so I'm just going to say it all the time. All right, number two. He's probably not even going to watch this video, though, but anyway. Hope somebody else likes it, too. Ah, uh, this one's twisting, right? This is what I'm talking about. I'll just show you. There's nothing you can do about it. And it may break and it doesn't matter. It's more about, they're just a one piece unit like that. It's more of a, just a, for the ease of fitting the gasket in place, whatever. It's not going to matter if it does. Twist and break like that. So it's funny how it clicks and then usually when you stop and get going again, you've got to, if you know what I mean. So if you're talking up a bolt and you're on the move, That'll give you an accurate um, setting. But if you stop and start again, there's going to be more tension there and sometimes it's going to click prematurely, if you know what I mean. So, funny these are clicking on the move and then you go to double check it and they move a little bit. That's what they do though, right? But if you think it through, it's a bit unusual. Right, so I'm a bit unco. Well, I just want to say in videos I'm a bit unco because I'm trying to stay out of the way of it so you can see what's going on. So I'm not really in my best position kind of thing. See, like that, see what I mean? It's a click and then, that's why I like to do it a few times and once you get a click and it's not moving, I'm happy. All right, so three down, one to go. Yeah, I'm doing left-handed, that's dodgy ass, right? So that number four washer, it twisted a little bit, not as much as number two, but I do note that two of them were like that from factory, because I believe this was a factory job. See, once you click it three times and it hasn't moved, then I'm happy, so just be aware of that. That's probably something I've just pointed out in this video I didn't in the last. You may have seen me doing that. But good point, because yes, yeah, so I feel it, it clicks and I check, and sometimes it doesn't go again, sometimes it does. And if you can get going again, then it's not up to that torque setting yet, so. Right, and if you're not sure, or you're doing a video and you got distracted, you can go check them again. They're not moving now, right? They are. Oh, this one did move a little bit, so. So worth checking, you know. Basically, look, I don't think over tightening, basically if you over tighten them, you're going to bust a hollow bolt. That's where you're going to have problems. I've never seen anything like it. I, don't, I haven't even heard of it. I've got some spare bolts there for one day when I do see it, but, right. Rather, again, be a little bit over than under, because if those washers leak, that's why you don't reuse them. If they leak, 
that's going to be an internal fuel leak or fuel filling up your engine oil. Not good. Or filling up your customer's engine oil if you're working on other people's cars. Alright, now we're going to drop down to what's the torque setting on the one at the back, guys? One at the back. 13. Yeah, 13, 14. I can tell you 13, 14, and 15. I'm not too fussed about that one because Bailey's online guide of torque settings for how to do injectors, which is, I'll say it's not even average. Anyway, don't want to bag other companies really, you know. It's just what it is. But I told them their torque settings are wrong and they are in a good position to adjust it. That was years ago, you know, two, three years ago. And they haven't done anything. Last time I checked recently, it was still 25, 25, 25, 25, 25. The actual torque specs are 13, 16, 22, and 35. They've got 25, 25, 25. Anyway, they do up that rear bolt to 25, this one here. And obviously, it must be able to take it because they haven't changed their thing. So everything can take 25, apparently. I don't know how their injectors go with that. Right, these things, these clamps. Because, uh, you know, over tighten them, as we've explained before, you're bananaing the injector. So how simple is that? That's putting the seats in, putting the injectors in, they're all lubed up, making sure the alignment's right, talking those to specification. Just make sure it's all um, nice and clean, the solenoid and that. Remember what I said about dust and dirt and anything? And we are dealing with oil that dirt can stick and attract to, so just make sure that's clean around those solenoids because um, you don't want those top seals to leak and that's what's going to cause them to leak. We already double checked, I don't know if I did on the video, but probably right before I started it. We re-cleaned the surface of the head where the gasket's going to sit. So we're basically ready to put the gasket on. So what we want to do now, something I haven't done yet, is just get the pipes, fuel pipes ready and lay those out. One, two, three, four. those ready because we're going to take the caps off right but if you're in a workshop and it's a windy dusty day if you go it's not dusty at the moment because it's melbourne winter it's wet and not too much look it doesn't take much dust and debris in the air minimize what you can close your doors for this little part try and do it quick as you can so the first thing i would do now is my valve cover obviously pre-prepared it's all clean dry, it's set out in the sun, it's bone dry, it's clean as a whistle. The top seal's all lubed and there's a nice soft gasket sitting in there waiting to seal it all up. Yeah, I'm just going to put the four prescribed dobs of silicon in the prescribed places. That's each side of this hump at this camshaft and on top of the half moon. Just a tiny little bit right in the middle where the gas is going to sit, nowhere else. I'm going to put a little bit extra there for you so you can see it, so you know what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see that one at that side. That's around about what they put at factory, okay? That's all you need to do. Do what they ask you to do. That's it. That's all you've got to do. And funny thing was, I just grabbed out the wrong pipes. So one, two, three or we'll put those away because guess what different fuel pipes different injectors i said that earlier got to get into another box over here get the correct pipes all right that's okay here we go that'll be our one two three four okay it didn't take long anyway okay pipes are out all good. Happy days, as I keep saying, happy days. Is that my favourite word? Okay, covers all clean, ready to go on. The light's working at the moment, that's good. Uh, nozzle seals are close enough to ready to go on, so we're going to take our caps off now. Covers all spotlessly clean, gaskets in, double check it's all in place, you just press it in, you don't need to glue it in, it's not going to fall out. You can actually double check it if you like, once it's sitting in position. 
if you look I've got a lot of loops it's just gonna fall on them and you know you can check it you can have a feel like that before you um, drop it down but look it's just on you know what I mean as I said straight away you've got those cap socks so get those nozzle seals and just sit them in place like a veranda right so if there's anything in the air it's not going to fall down on into those nozzles right which they're not quite clear with just the cover there, right? So that's the first thing I want to do. If there's anything falling down, it's not going to fall into those injector inlets now. But they're still open, okay? What we'll do now is we'll chuck the bolts back in, the nuts and bolts and everything. So the one with the clamp, those at the front. And I haven't washed these nuts and bolts. They might get a bit more washed when we wash the whole thing down. I don't enough cleaning on this vehicle, I tell you. This would have been a much quicker job, which would have saved the customer some money. I was hoping to do that. But as it turns out, what we saved in being a bit easier to work on or a lot easier to work on, we more than chewed up in cleaning time. So it's kind of like worse than a um, standard job, if you know what I mean. I'm not complaining, I'm just trying to explain it. Um, but look, I'm not going to charge him any extra. We'll just Sort of quite, quite more or less standard price worst case scenario and I like to give you some good news every now and then if it works out that way but this time it hasn't worked out that way. Now how am I going to get this nut down there? I think these intercooler brackets are a little bit big and in the way so kind of got to go. back ones in as well you know we're going to do the back ones up last this is one of the key things you know there's a whole I hope you're picking up some information the idea of this is you know a lot of you guys have done them before and you can figure out how to do it and all that that's right but you might not have figured out that if you do these back ones up first because you didn't think we were in a hurry you might cause a problem and crack the cover okay we couldn't see any cracks in this cover. I'm, I know there was some bit of oil sort of staining around and whatever. I'm not too sure what was going on there. There's nothing we saw. Maybe the, the valve cover gasket was leaking a little bit, which is unusual, but this one is 14 years old. So just going to give these a quick zip down. Now I'm not, not going hard. We're just taking up the slack, right? Same even here at the front, right? Just taking up the slack. New gasket's very soft. Right, now let's pop that uni joint on to do the back to it. Like I said, I've got all the tools, everything set up, trying to get it done. Not quickly as possible, but fairly swiftly to keep the video. Trust me, it's not my idea of trying to make a video as longer, it's just what it is sometimes what it is and this is one of those long ones and the idea is it's definitely worth it for someone but either can't afford to pay someone to do this job because it's already expensive enough with the parts I get that um, or people that just love doing their own stuff and they're quite capable of doing it do tips and tricks okay so Actually, I forgot that one because it was hidden behind the clamp and I did that first, right? But that's all right. Whoop, come back here. Where are you going? So, right, you'll just feel when you do these just by hand, right? You'll feel there's like a crush tube in the cover you would have seen if you had a look. And you'll just feel it when it comes to there. It's not going to matter what, how many newton meters you do or don't do. It's not going any further than there. So it's just enough torque on the bolt so it doesn't come loose. All right. We're going to torque these up to 9 Newton meters eventually, right? Because that's what the torque setting is. And we've got the torque wrench out. So that's what we're going to do. It's not hard to do. Now, some people in the trade, whatever, that are not used to using torque wrenches, they're going to think, ah, Carver, geez, why would you do that? All right, I'll tell you why, like I said. We got it out and then we're just perfect right there's no maybes there's you know it just doesn't take long to do i normally like to get the pipes on straight away 
and I'm just going to do it now while we're at it. The key thing is to make sure you do drop it down to 9 Newton meters. Look, 9 or 10, I don't really care, thereabouts. Don't argue. Right, so we're on about there. Look at that, boom. Right, we just want it to be factory. That's what the engineers designed. We're using genuine parts. Look, I don't really care what pattern you do these up in really, just as long as you do it. So like I said, it was down to the crush tubes anyway, so it just didn't matter. What matters really though, I think, you just want to do the corners last. Because I'll just point it out again, where they're prone to cracking is across the front here, which I believe from people tightening this one. Because the, the go-to is starting at one end or the other, you know, some of those, boom, tighten it up, boom, and they go too tight. Because those crush tubes, they will crush a little bit. So I just like to do them last. And you can go over and check them again if you like, but I've been there, done that, and you watch, nothing's gonna happen. Right, so it's already there. <clears throat> the other thing's worth double checking. The cover, you can zip it down, you can do it by hand, as soon as you feel it. Mate, once you talk at the first time, it ain't going nowhere. You wanna check another one? Look, here we go. No, not moving. Sure, I need the uh, uni joint. <clears throat> At the end of this, I'm going to double check them all anyway. Always think through in your head, did I do the injector clamps? Did I do the return lines? Did I, before you put the cover on, triple check it. You don't want to get the cover on and then go, oh, I can't remember that. Because you kept stopping and starting going to watch a video or something. Some bloody black maker videos. <clears throat> and you sort of forgot what you were doing. Okay, we'll just pop that back on while we're at it. Now we're going to put the uh, pipes on and we're going to push the nozzle seals in one by one as we need to. Right. <coughs> so I get a bit of this throat, dry throat thing, you know, because I talk too much. Too much talking. Now listen to videos, I'm always going. <coughs> Okay, so look at that, the cover's on. Doesn't it look beautiful compared to before? Look at these beautiful babies, eh? Nice clean cover you could eat off. Beautiful. Okay, let's get these pipes happening. Number four, fuel pipe. Okay, where's my Stanley knife going? Right there next to where the pipe was. That makes sense. Okay, so with this one, with the Euro 3 pipes, they are different. If you do buy a set of injectors off me where you have, I hope I sent you the right ones. No, no. I would have sent you the right ones. Usually, hopefully. Um, there's two clamps on it. And because it's been a while, I can't remember which way they go, but I took it off just before you think I'd be able to figure it out. You've got to fit the clamps on number four fuel pipe that how silly is it? They don't even fit the clamp, it comes in a separate little bag. Anyway, there's two clamps on this number four fuel pipe, and I'm gonna fit them onto the pipe the way I think they were. I've already put the old one in the bin, because the mess was doing my head in, the OCD kicked in, I had to get the mess in the bin. I normally let it sit there so I could show the client, look, that's your old garbage, whatever. Anyway, I don't know if I've got it right, but this is the way I've done it. One facing up, one facing down. I'm sure that's the way it goes, but. I'm just not sure whether I got it the right way around, but we're about to find out when I go to install it on the vehicle. And I don't do a lot of these Euro 3 ones, so that's why I don't remember exactly which way they go. Where I know on the number four, what is it, faces up, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, faces upward on number four pipe usually. So, push that number four nozzle seal in. Take off that number four, cap off the common rail that we put on earlier and glad we capped it because it's been hours of been cleaning stuff so worth capping things and then I usually like to sit it in place these are quite easy to line up and everything right compared to yeah did I get it right let me see yeah I think I did so look I'm just going to take the caps off that's what I'm saying they're black caps on the euro so if you some if you end up with getting these an 05, 06 Hilux and you can get black caps on the pipes 
you got problems. You better ring me, it means I mucked up. And that is not how that clamp goes. If it goes facing upwards, around the other way, not the flat side at the back, the flat side of the front, funnily enough. How dodgy is that? Anyway, things go how they go. So that's how we've got to put it back. So I'll just turn that around. Right. So we just want to go straight on without touching anything else. It's all clean around there. Doesn't matter if we touch that pipe on what really, because it's all clean. Right, same down the bottom. Direct straight onto the common rail. Not banging around in dirt and debris. A, because we cleaned the debris. I'll put that clamp on wrong as well, so I'll fix that up. Right. The way these clamps go, the flat side's got to be facing out towards you. Right. This looks a bit unco, but that's how it is. You wouldn't have thought it goes that way, but it does. Right. We'll just sit those, these first two bolts. Remember earlier I said put the, you know, furthest ones that you took off first towards the middle, furthest away, and work your way closer. So as soon as I went, I need a couple of bolts, I know it was those two furthest out to the side. Not that I don't know anyway, I'm just saying for you guys, right? You know it's those ones, or well, you've got a fair idea. Even better if you took note and had a think about it as well, but... Right, so... Bada boom, bada bing, right? Just get it all finger tight, and I like to do up the clamps. before I do up the pipe. Right. So I'm just going to use the 12 mil ratchet because I know I do note earlier we needed that on I think the back one. So we'll just use that on both. It's going to hold it in the position it wants to be rather than tighten up your pipe and then have a clamp pull it to where it should have been and it wasn't and then it's putting pressure on your, your seal at your pipe which because you've got new pipes and everything, you're probably not going to have an issue anyway, but um, I'd rather just make sure it's all in the correct position and angles by, okay, your common rail is bolted there, your injectors are bolted there, they're not moving. So, put these clamps on, and now we can torque up the pipes. Now, I'm going to do them one by one. Normally I put the pipes on, whatever. You know what? No, I'll put number three pipe on actually. Which is what I normally do. I remember when we pulled it apart, I noted that it's the same as the later ones. Like I said, it's been a while, I couldn't remember. Just taking the black caps off now. Take the cap off the common rail. Um, I noted that we couldn't get to number two without removing number one. So what I do on the, the later ones is I put on four, three, two, then I torque that up, right, if you follow me, but a boom, make sure they're pushed in all the way, make sure you haven't got a catch can that's blocked up because it pops them back out and that has happened to people, that's real, so good luck to you in your catch can stories. What you want to do there, doesn't bother me, they can cause problems, right? So they're both done up by hand, happy days. Yeah, there, there it goes again, happy days. We're going to get number two fuel pipe. Number two fuel pipe. Okay, same deal. Push number Two nozzle seal in now. Take the cap off. So we didn't do a manifold clean on this, certainly wasn't worth it. And we've wiped any. There was a little bit, the worst of it is right here because it comes through this pipe and goes boof right on the EJR valve. And it sort of goes just on this backside just here, down in the manifold, not bad at all. Okay, not worth cleaning. But, you know, if it was your own car, you could go ahead and spend another day and have some fun, enjoy yourself, you know, do some work on your car, throw some new injectors at it and get it all running sweet and clean. Alright, so just getting all those started. Number two, for the common roll in the top. Notice it's sitting nicely in the clamp like that. 
we can't put this clamp on yet though because number one pipe needs to go in there but we need to talk up number two fuel pipe down at the common rail before we go any further so we grab our tools to do that Like I said earlier, I think there's a chance that we could have maybe got to it, but I'm just going to do it this way. That's what we normally do, so we're going to stick with what works. Note, I do like to try new things and try different things this time and that time. Um, and I do it quite a lot in videos. Let's try this, let's try that. <laughs> That's why it doesn't always work out. I think it's because you're there, it's like, hey, let's try this, because it's like you're here with me, you know. Anyway. Alright. Okay, let's see if we can get around to there. No. So with some of these, the easiest way is you turn your crow squid around 180 degrees, kind of back to front if you like, to get your next swing on the thing. And while you're doing this, because you haven't got the clamp on, just make sure it's secured. Alright into the area where it's clamped, if you know what I mean. It's gonna be clamped. Oh, so just keeping that clamp in there. Oh, not keeping the clamp in there, keeping the pipe in position. See, like I said, I always say the wrong thing. I know what I mean. Unfortunately, I've got to say what I mean so you know what I'm talking about, right? There it is, right? I don't mind if the pipes are a few newton metres over by double or triple checking them. Okay, so one more pipe and we've got it all sealed up. One more pipe. Okay, black cap's coming off now. Take the cap off the common rail. No dust, dirt, debris going on around in here, but the sort of things that can cause problems are probably smaller than what you can see anyway, so certainly. So you can't take too much care, and that's what I'm saying. It's really, really risky getting your valve clearances checked. You know, anyone that's had that done, I'm just going, oh, you know, it's kind of just like I wish they didn't. Don't let them touch it. Just don't let anyone touch it. Go and buy your 2014 or 15 one KD brand new and don't let anyone touch it, you know. Okay. Look at that alignment. I mean, you can't see it from that angle there, but I can tell you that is a beautiful thing. I'm going to bring you around in a minute and show you what I'm talking about because it is just beautiful. But we're on a roll, so we're going to keep going. We'll have a look at the alignment later. Right, we just put that flat clamp on the two 10 mils. Like I said to you with those, there's different ways you can do it. I'm actually gonna go zoop zoop with this. Right, just a quick little five newton meters they're meant to be. Just a little, you know, they're probably five or ten, but that'll be fine. You just don't go crazy on them. Right, everything's done up now. We're gonna finish off talking the rest of the pipes. We'll put one more clamp on actually because that's what we do, we put the clamps on first. That's basically the injector side of it done. So we've just got to put all the EJR and everything else back together once we torque the pipes anyway. So technically, once we torque these pipes, we've got a lot of stuff unplugged, but I don't think it's anything enough that would stop this engine from running. So, yeah. So, the best way is to use the impact driver. Don't get in between it and get pinched though, because this one's a bit old and it's trying to twist that bottom bit. It's trying to get me to hold it because it wants my skin. Right. I'm gonna show you where the five newton meters doesn't work, right? Watch. That's more than five newton meters. So it's still slipping, right? Because all the rubber's old and squashed, and like I said, 50 bucks each. So what you do is, you keep going. I'm watching how much it's turning, right? So don't worry about the pressure. It's still moving just a little bit, right? I'm gonna give it a little bit more. I don't mind crushing the brackets a little bit. Not crazy like you see some guys do. Right? Look at that. I'm not going anywhere. Happy days. 
And if you look at the, it, you can't even tell that I've sort of over time, but some cars come in and these are things are not flat anymore. They're like a bloody set of golden arches outside McDonald's, you know? They're like an M, if you know what I mean. Hope you had a laugh at that. Not that funny, but you know. <laughs> Hey, there you go, there's a new one. We've got all these names for things, you know. When the pipes are bent, we call it a jack-in-the-box, you know, when the pipes spring up at us. Now when those clamps are over time, we can call it a uh, set of golden arches. There you go. Oh, here we go, another set of golden arches. Anyway, tech talk. Secret tech talk, all right? So we're going to uh, talk up the fuel pipes up at the top first, because that's easier. Now, now, the problem we got is... That is a problem. We need to make sure we've got it set on 32. And I made a mistake on number two fuel pipe. And I had it set on the old torque setting still of whatever we did last. I don't even know what it was. but Actually, I might have just put it in the wrong place. So lucky I checked that. Um, so we're going to go straight back in there and do number two fuel pipe again to make sure we can get to it. Which I'm sure we can with number one in the way. Just a bit more difficult, you know. And those other little crow's foots I was sending out there, everyone, are awesome. But, look, I'm not sure if I just made a mistake and had the wrong torque setting, but I think I did. Need the hose out of the way. Painful, because if I take this off and bring it to there, it's a bit close to the battery. I don't like that. That's all right, we're okay though. Okay, don't guarantee that's there yet because I was hitting, it's pretty close, but okay. Don't worry, I'm kind of talking to myself a bit. I do that. If I haven't got you to talk to. Quite difficult. You can just get in there if you've gone far enough and try and dodge a heater hose and whatever. You can just get in there. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. While we're at it, you know what? We're going to do number one. We normally do up at the top first, but you know what? We're here now, so we're set up for it. See how much softness there is and how much the new pipes squash. Like I said, I kind of go by feel a bit as well. Sometimes I might go a bit over, but I sort of... They are very soft, the pipes, and... Kind of... It's a bit of a pain as well, I can't. Back over here again. We've got the wobble extensions. do a bit of repositioning a few times with this one. Just doing uh, number three at the moment and that's not it because it hit the next part, the one that supplies the common rail. So like I said, got a bit of a feel for it and um, I'm kind of tend to go that or and some if it doesn't feel right which is a bit hard for you guys man that's pretty right they are nice and soft when they're new so i don't think you're going to have an issue as i said with bailey's online guide 25 newton meters if people are doing that and not have any issues well chances are maybe you can get away with 25 but i'm not going to start telling people that because 32 works that's the workshop Manual, you know, Toyota genuine way to do it by the engineers. So that's all how we've done it. Now all those fuel pipes down there are done. I'm just gonna get to those ones up the top. Okay. Some people take make this job part of the job take forever. There's no need for it. Okay, 
you can see how long it takes by right here. The way some people roll is they make it take longer. They make you watch and help and purposely make it take longer so they can charge you more trying to justify the pricing. I'll just tell you, mate, it's a day's work. That's the rate. That's the thing. And Bob's your uncle, you know. Come and watch if you want so you can see what's involved. Learn. Do it yourself next time. Have you ever met someone that wants to try their hardest to put themselves out of business? Alright, so you know, like usual, over and check them again. Also, rather be a little bit over. That really goes for just about anything, really. Rather be a little bit over than a little bit under. And that concludes the injector job. Really, well, you know, all the main parts of it, I suppose. I mean, you don't get away with not pulling apart some of the other stuff we've taken on. Um, so... But as far as that goes, the fuel system sealed, you could pump this up, and if you hit the key, the vehicle would start. Even though we haven't put the compensation codes in and we've got all this, oh no, it wouldn't, you've got to plug in the injectors. Hope you laughed at that. Um, let me just have a look where the view's at. And we'll just keep, we'll keep working on it. There you go. This is gonna be a long one, I don't know when this is gonna upload, but anyway, good luck. And if it gets up there and you can watch it, happy days. Um, here's your are. Here's your are. What have we got? Where's the next part that goes back on? I don't know. I seem to have lost it. No, no, just joking. Okay, so. Now, with the injector kit, if you haven't done it yet, you would have been asked, do you want to replace or reuse the gaskets? because obviously people are a bit nervous sometimes and they just want new gaskets and I'm doing the whole thing sometimes I'm putting new gaskets that's one way to look at it the other way is they're eight bucks each and you know you want to reuse it because you're saving money try to cut Mr. Toyota out of whatever we can I'm just going to wipe that surface again I already did a number of times but it's been sitting there I don't know what fell on it and if there's a bit of dirt or crud it's going to hold that gap open a bit and cause me a leak I don't want that I like to do things once, so just double check that. Never had an issue reusing some of the gaskets, and that's what we've done there. That's a that's a recycle job. It's not really even about the money, it's just if you don't oh, just waste. I can't stand waste. I've said that before. You know? I don't want to replace anything that doesn't need replacing, basically. You know, within reason. It's a reliability thing like a bearing you might chuck a guess at it and go well you've got it off so let's you know let's replace it while we're at it just putting the gasket back on the end of that pipe which fell off right that's that one there same one okay get the ejr valve now see if we can remember how that goes back on again just checking all the surfaces they've all been cleaned and dried and everything happy days but Pretty sure. Okay. Bada boom, bada bing. You remember that? When we had these two bolts, so if we look there, they'll be the next two bolts. Okay. You like my system? Works pretty well. Whatever I can do to help. But again, if you're watching this video and you're going, oh, this is a bigger job than I've ever done on if I should, and da da. And you're prone to losing things and busting nuts and bolts and stuff. Don't do it. Just give me a call again and say, hey, got this injector kit off you. And I've decided I shouldn't be touching it. Well, I've decided if you've got someone that's done dozens of these or hundreds of these. And they're good and they know what they're doing and they don't have stuff ups then let's get them to do it because we want it to be right for the next five or ten years. We don't want to be guessing or wondering or looking at it again a short period of time later.
that gasket goes on top like that. We'll just tighten those up later once we've got the rest of it all sort of kind of all together, if you know what I mean. Oh, the light's gone off, I just noticed, but anyway, it doesn't matter, you can still see a bit, can you? Yeah, so I reckon there's a light on this thing, let's turn it on and see what happens. Light, yeah, hang on, light, no, how do I do that? No, I reckon, I don't know, maybe I have to turn it on before I start. Oh well, it doesn't matter. I can see what I'm doing. It's mainly the talk and the explanation anyway. Just wanted to show you, and I said, oh, we're not going to clean it that well. You can't see in there, it looks black, doesn't it? That's alloy and coal. Let me get a torch. Okay, same as over there. So there's a speck of black in there. Can you see that, E. Joe? There is a speck of black. That's what I'm talking about. It's got to end somewhere. Right, you know, it's pretty good. It's good enough. It's good enough. It's good enough for spending most of a day cleaning. Do you not like those words good enough? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of them either. Oops. Drop the first nut for the day. Maybe I'm going nuts. Okay, so we're going to put one nut there. This long bolt will go there. There must be another nut that goes around here. See, not even looking, working blind, just going by feel. And, oh, we forgot to put that bracket on, sir. There you go, but, because I went to put the next bolt in and the bracket's not there, but luckily, we know that'll be a non-issue, I hope. We took that off before the pipes and all that. That's the risk on the 1KD. You can put it on after the pipes as well, but you just need to be, uh, after the pipes, you need to use your, your crow's foot and you may not have one of those. So if you take that bracket off on any of the other cars, the earlier, the later Hilux or the 120, just make sure you um, put it back on. Don't do what I did, as I said. Do as I say, not as I do. But you know, no big deal, right? As I said, do as I say, not as I do, use a torque ring. Don't do this. I know, I know exactly what torque setting this does. I've been using it. She's like, this one's been going about 10 years. Um, never rely on one of those, always check it by hand. Where's my ratchet hiding in these rags here? Oh, and it should be spot on. Yep, perfect. Good work. Yep, perfect. They went a bees, but a bees, you know what? As I said, I know exactly what I'm doing with this, so do as I say, not as I do, and don't do that, all right? It's all about getting it a bit done a bit quicker for you, and I know what I'm doing with that, okay? Okay, it's been well practiced before. All you got to worry about is not forgetting anything. See, they just went a little bit more, so they were nearly there. They would have been okay, well, maybe not that one. What are they just meant to be? About 20 newton meters, I think, but I, I've never talked to them in my life. There you go. Never, ever. Oh, look, I don't think I have anyway. And now that that's at the right height, because that's done first, then we'll nip these. And I think these are those sorts of things that are meant to be 13 Newton meters. Again, for me, it's by hand. Remember you're going into alloy and I've probably done about 15 or 18 Newton meters, right? Happy days. Mm. Look at that, getting back together. Um, it's always worth having to think before you jump to the next step. I think this 
unit that goes on the side would be next. Our next bolt, of course, up the top, sitting there waiting for us to put on. One of those. Started if we're lucky. Next one. What I should have probably done is put the bottom vacuum line on first because this one's a bit hard to get to, but that's right, we'll get to it. I'm going to do that now to make sure before I decide I've got to take it back off again. Now that one's on. So, how easy are these to work on? I mean, from what you've seen in the video, the hardest part was the cleaning. Someone come and do that cleaning next time. Certainly the hard part, the terrible cleaning. Now I'll move this fuel filter back up to where it's going to go. Slowly get things back in position where they belong. And now that the fuel system's sealed and it's back in place, the first thing I want to do is start pumping it up. Because that's hard, it'll go soft again and da -da -da. it'll bleed through a little bit and it does save a bit of time getting it started if you do that. Okay, now this wiring loom, again, made a point that we didn't need to strangle the buggery out of it when we moved it over there out the way. Just going to manipulate that back into position. That clip goes in there, and then that plug goes there. Plug goes there, it all just falls back into place. You don't have to worry with all the plugs, just follow and go, yeah, well, that'll be on the intercooler. This is for the fuel filter, so we'll plug that back in. Why was it I smelt fuel? What have I forgotten? Oh, it's leaking out the side of the fuel filter because it was laying down. Ah, that's interesting. What's going on there? Fuel leaking out when I pump it. That's not good. Interesting. Yep. What's going on there? We did have someone come in once telling me about um, a fuel filter that was leaking. And I'm not too sure what we worked out with that in the end, but that shouldn't be happening. I'm going to leave the camera rolling. We'll see what we can work out. Perhaps someone didn't do it up properly when they changed the filter last time. Would be my guess. And the lids popped up a little bit, perhaps. I'm not sure. But let's remember it was tight to get out as well. There it is. What's going on here? Yeah, yeah, look at that. There's a big gap there. No, it's not even done up properly. Twangers, man, seriously. What's the matter with people? God. So I've got to push it down properly, somehow. And then do it up. Look at that, see? Unbelievable, you know? So you got to see it live in the VIP group. Anyway, fuel leaking everywhere, not my fault. I'm not to know, geez, what people do. But anyway, we will get it fitted back on. And do it up so that it's not leaking. All right, how far we got to go? It's all slippery now, because of the oil all over it. It's got a fair way to go by the looks of it. What a pain. I'm tempted to take it off and um, I'm not sure if we're going to change it on this job or not. It's normally at the end I'll speak and say, hey, you know, da da da, all good, and suss out whether it needed to be done or not. And the fact that it's been touched, it's probably saying it's been changed. So, what I'm going to do, sit that in a good spot there like that, give that a good pressing down, and hopefully then I can. Tighten it up the rest of the way. Still a bit further to go, we're nearly there. So some doofus has, what's this, Toyota guys or something, you know what I mean? Toyota Apprentices of the Year Award. Right. Letter Apprentices of the Year Award, yeah. Some other workshop. Who knows? It doesn't really matter. But look, 
You can't do that. Is it there yet? I can't even see because it's around the other side. It's got to be around to, it goes to there, doesn't it? So I think it's still got a bit further to go. <sighs> Quite hard to do in there. Like this. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Okay, set it back in the bracket and give it a push down and just try to make sure it's all the way. Terrible. Okay, that'll be it. Just so you know what it is, guys, there's two little arrows on that ring there. And there's a little arrow under the outlet hose there. And that's where it's got to line up to. Now we'll be able to pump it up with that fuel going over it. Now it doesn't matter how tight it is. The tightness is not what seals it. What seals it is the O-ring. But if it comes too far below the O-ring, and it is going to vibrate loose over time if it isn't done up. Once it gets to the end, it kind of like locks into position. Well, Unbelievable. Anyway, look, you know, we could have not noticed that quite easily if it didn't leak fuel. These things happen for a reason. And what would have happened is, you know, we would have done the job and then, you know, the customer would have got the car back. It was fine, no problem driving it. A week later, a day later, an hour later, it breaks down. Fuel leaking everywhere. And two ways that gets handled usually by a lot of people. The right people will ring and say, hey, yeah. We've got a problem, eh? You know, let's check it out. And I'll be going, oh no, thinking, oh no, what have I done? What have I done? Because I do get those feelings sometimes. And um, usually not anything. One time I forgot to, oh, I can't say that actually. But, uh, oh yeah, I'll say it. Yeah, someone wanted me to fit an EJR plate, gave me a full blank instead of one with a hole in it. And of course I didn't fit, but you know, we forgot to drill it out. That's what happened. So of course he got an engine lock, because, you know, autopilot put the plate in anyway but of course I don't do that so it doesn't really matter that was just in a dream anyway I think hope you're having a laugh anyway um, dodgy brothers anyway there it is it's not leaking but the point that could have gone bad you know you could have broken down and then some people what they do when they have problems hey they just you never hear from them again eh? you know I, I know people that deal with things that way Oh, I'll never go there again and whatever. Hey, somebody does something for you. I know customer service is pretty bad, right? It is, and I can see why people do that, but hey, if it's me, give me the chance to sort it out, please, you know? But do it reasonably, don't start carrying on. Don't go and carrying on on Facebook or talking to people, backstabbing and carrying on, you know what I mean? But don't do that, that's not gonna help you. That's just gonna get you nothing, not gonna work. And you've only got yourself to blame if you do it that way. Alright, so... But yeah, you know, that could have easily been a breakdown and he's going, oh, this guy, you know, he's just done a, you know, whatever, injector job for me and... And then this has happened and that's happened. It makes you look bad, but as you can see, not my fault. But luckily, it was just pure luck, man. Not some good or anything. Not that good. Just got lucky of it. <laughs> A fuel filter happened to start leaking every while I was pumping it up. And um, we worked out what it was pretty quickly, which was good. Um, had me worried for half a second. What's going on there? Is that... Uh, have a look. What's going on with that? It just feels a bit... I oh know, it's just a bit old and stiff and getting caught on. Right. Let's make sure they all go click, click, click. Okay, we plugged everything around this side pretty close. Let's see this bracket down here. Remember that one where we took the bolt out? Easy to know where that bolt is because we put it back in the hole. Usually if you put a bolt in, tighten it up straight away because more or less, because it's more chance you're going to forget to tighten it up if you don't. Want to get onto it straight away. So if you... Okay, that's that. More plugs for the intercooler. Now back over this side a little bit. 
All this will just fall into place as well. First year coolant temperature sensor down there. Click. When you hear a click, you're happy. Just follow it along. That usually sort of tucks in there behind the timing cover a bit. That one sort of doesn't really click too much. And then you've got your aircon compressor. All right. Another bracket. The MAF sensor. And of course the bracket that goes into the airbox, which we didn't butcher getting out, but people had it out before. <laughs> Look how easy it came out anyway. I was mucking around before trying to get it out. Yeah, it's going to stay there. I mustn't have clipped it in properly the first time, but I was being careful to get it out without wrecking it, but it seems like maybe it's wrecked there already anyway. This tape's a bit... Again, old car, 14-year-old thing. You could sit there fixing stuff up, but the tape's a bit dodgy, but... Anyway, all good. Let's just have a look at that. That's good. Wire's not rubbing anywhere. So far, so good. Now, if you're waiting for me to um, start the car, you're going to be waiting a long time. No, I'm, not, no, I'm just joking, actually. You won't be waiting much at all because... I will stop the video soon and go and put the conversation codes in. Yeah, small work. So you've basically got to see the physical side of it, strip it down, put it back together, the important parts. I hope I dropped all the torque settings and whatever. This video would suit more all the Hilux owners and the 120 Prado, I suppose, is similar. But your intake's a little bit different, Euro 4. This is a Euro 3, as we mentioned earlier in the video. But a lot of stuff's very similar, okay? What I'm going to do once I get this back on, I've got a car on the board. As I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted. I've got a car on the hoist that I'm doing a service on. That's in no sort of hurry. A bit like this one. This is not in a hurry either. This can either go tonight or it can go tomorrow. So it doesn't really matter. That's how we roll. Um, but I might just give this a break. Once I get all this back together, we'll keep rolling until then. Right, we'll keep rolling and have a look at all the bits and pieces and plugs I've put on. Right. I'm going to check out a few nuts and bolts again afterwards anyway. Maybe, maybe not. There's a phone call. That's almost enough to... Um, end the video so I think I'm going to do that whatever you do don't forget this plug here to plug in on the back there and a few others but I'll restart the video shortly sorry about that it was just another quick call it's been good actually <clears throat> not too many interruptions at the right time so that's all good all good we plugged that in this goes on the intercooler along with all these plugs as well um, we've got our codes that's all secured our valve cover we did, we talked all that up, we got all our wiring back on, definitely did all the pipes, pumped it up, and the fuel filter leaking everywhere. Right, not leaking now, give that a good clean up. How much fuel's on the ground? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, bit of a puddle. Oh yeah, fair bit actually coming this way. Yeah, bloody couple hundred mil of fuel on the floor. Not too bad, but you get that. Always just giving it another pump every now and then. So. We might as well go ahead and put the intercooler back on and then the physical side of the job is pretty much done so then you can see that and then we'll edit, cut, go and do a uh, conversation codes and whatever and look that'll that's going to do this video, I'll, I'll put the um, intercooler on and it's more than enough information, more than you need really, um, still might have something else for you, you never know but if you, if you, you know, got basic skills, this is more than you need to do the job right, if you know what I mean. So, hopefully that's the situation. Just bring the intercooler over. As I said, don't forget to move that rag out of the way. 
around this side, which is where we take the integral to put it on anyway. Heavy little unit, so carefully take that rag off. Bang. Put it in the socket of the turbo first, just gently. And then, there you go. Let you see what's going on a bit. And then, over here, just line that up so that it kind of goes in pretty easy, usually. You know, you've got a bit of resistance here by the clamps trying to hit themselves. You've got to get this map filter out of the way out here. But look, at the end of the day, the main thing you've got to concentrate on, it's not hard to put the intercooler on, but just lining up that and then gently like that, and all these mounts will come into place. You can make sure you put that map, well, this is the map sensor here, in case you didn't know. It's a bit different to the other ones, and bada boom, bada bing. I just noticed actually these ones, oh yeah, I was going to say, they don't lock into position, but they sure do. Of course, the plug for the map sensor, they don't get to work out if you don't plug that in. What else we got to plug in? This plug here. <clears throat> Of course, the clamps at both sides and the mounting bolts. So of course, you know where we left the bolts. The short one would obviously go in there. I think it needs to go back a little bit more. Just a little bit. So look, you know, normally I'd probably slow down and double check a few things a bit more. So learn from my mistakes. I don't know if I made any mistakes, but possibly because I'm sort of trying to think of just getting through the job so I can show you what's involved. All right, which means, and I'm getting distracted a little bit too, right? So, but I think we're right. We're pretty good. Okay, get back to those started. Yeah, definitely started by hand. Again, we're going to speed it up, bit of a fast forward, but without doing time lapse, we're just going to go zip, zip, zip. Okay, that might sound like a lot of hammering, but it's very light on the trigger. It's a soft hammer, it's very, you know, I can sit there all day going. I'm not pulling the trigger hard, do we? Right. As I've said 10 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, you know, your best decision is to just go and just check it anyway and give it a further nip if you need to. If you need to or not. Right. So I'd say these are tight enough to not worry about. I've given it a little nip anyway. So other than putting the cover over the engine, that. Let's go all the way till it's all finished and beautiful, eh? You know, we could turn the key. We might start the car for you, even though we haven't put the conversation codes in. Just to complete the video while it's rolling, so you can see that what I stuffed up. Kind of joking. It'll be sweet. These clamps, I like to make sure they're sitting in the right spot, nice and square. Don't over tighten them, don't under tighten them. House tight's tight, well, tight enough that 15 psi doesn't leak out, and loose enough that you don't um, wreck the rubber sock by over tightening it, cutting into it or something, you know. I don't know if that helps you at all, but I suppose that's something you're going to have to figure out, isn't it? You know, make sure you put it in the right spot. Maybe a little bit fiddly to get in there, but it's not too bad. Just use the force. Go by feel, have a bit of a feel, you know. 
make sure the clamp's sitting in the right spot as you go. I had it quite loose because sometimes if you don't, they get a bit caught up, so I do back them off quite a bit. Now that I've got it sitting where I think it wants to be, I'm going to put my big fat head in the way for a minute and have a look. Yep, there you go. Is that the only time I put my big fat head in the way for the whole video? Basically, if you're using a quarter drive and you're holding it near the head of the ratchet, you're not going to really be able to over time it unless you're T-Man or King Kong. But, as far as I'm concerned, this engine is nearly ready to start. Let's put this power steering as all back where he belongs and have a quick look at everything and make sure before I hit the key. But you know what, I think we're going to hit the key. We're going to get the cover for the intercooler. The cover for the intercooler. So we've done it clamps both sides of mounting bolts. Looks like we've put the map plug on and the map filter, other plugs, everything's right. Except for the ones we forgot. I think we plugged in the back the throttle position sensor. I think we did. Let's risk it. Pretty sure I said you don't forget that and I plugged it in. But that was right about where I had a call, ended the video and you know, da da da. So might have forgotten it, but look, you know. I don't think so, but we'll roll with it and just see what happens. That way you can see how we deal with it if we did forget. But I really think we're sweet. We're not far off launching. It's a bit like waiting for NASA to launch a... I remember that. When I was at primary school or what happened and... You know, home from school or before school. I remember it seemed like waiting forever for them to launch that damn... What those spaceships? They're just me. A long time ago. Don't they do that anymore? Have they worked out that they can't trick us anymore? It didn't really happen. I don't know whether it did or not. Some people seem to think that it's not even real. Not even true. Yeah, as if they worked, walked on the moon. Right. I don't even think about that hard. Could be true that they tricked us. I don't know. Why well, would they? Really? Okay, so that's all pumped up. You think of the technology, if they did that back then, we'd all be on Mars by now, but anyway. Seems to be everything else has happened that they made in the movies. Almost, we haven't got flying cars yet. Rightio. Rightio, no st spare parts, no bolts sitting anywhere. So other than putting the compensation codes in, this job's done, and a lot of people ask me, they're a bit concerned about, you know, you know, running it without the compensation codes in? Well, let's see what happens. Alright. Let's. Just going to open the roller door. Because it may actually be a little bit smoky at the other end, so... I'll crank it and we'll see what happens. And that's typical how long it would take to start if you pumped it up a few times beforehand. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'll move the car back a little bit and uh, I'll say it again.
So yeah, typically that's about how long it would take to start after you've uh, done a set of injectors on it. But obviously it's stone cold, it's probably got some debris in the ports, the pressures aren't going to be spot on. Take no notice of what you hear in the first few minutes, let it warm up, give it a clean up, take it for a drive, these sorts of things, then you'll be able to judge what it's actually at and it'll be sweet as. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the R&R &R injectors on a Euro 3 Hilux. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's beautiful, all road tested, and runs absolutely fantastic. Did I mention I really like these Euro 3s? I really do. They're nice and light. Without the EGR cooler. No, no EGR cooler in there. Sometimes these early Euro 3s they are a bit noisy even with new injectors. Let's just suss it out. How quiet is that? No rattle at all. Bit of a knock as it comes back to idle. Sometimes. Yeah, hear that? Normal. Nothing wrong with this car, I'll tell you. Awesome. You know what? Other than need a lot of oil changes to clean it up, that is damn well fantastic. And we're all sitting there going, why isn't ours that quiet? I know, it's good, isn't it? They don't all, they all vary how they are. I'm like trying to get it to make noises, you know? It just sounds like a petrol engine, you know? You tell me that's not a diesel. How good is that? 315 Ks guys, that's what you got to look forward to if you look after it. Hey, apparently that's if you don't look after it. Imagine if you do look after it.